Now in this next case, you'll be told to locate the stationary points of the function f of x, y equals to x squared plus 4y squared minus 5x, y minus 29x plus 50y plus 17. And state there their nature. So it can be either one stationary point or more than one, isn't it? So the first thing we do is to obtain the six partial derivatives, isn't it? So this is a function of x and y. So first of all, we can differentiate it partially with respect to x. Subscript x implies that we are differentiating it partially, meaning only x is considered as a variable and anything else is a constant, isn't it? So if you differentiate this partially with respect to x, meaning x squared, you get to x if you differentiate partially with respect to x, isn't it? Then 4y squared, there is no x here, meaning the whole of this is a variable, isn't it? It's a constant, so it becomes zero if you differentiate, isn't it? Then here, if you differentiate this partial with respect to x, it means negative 5y is a constant. And if you differentiate x, you get 1, isn't it? So 1 times your constant, which is negative 5y, you remain with negative 5. Are we together? Yes. Then if you differentiate negative 29x with partial with respect to x, it means this negative 29 is a constant, isn't it? And if you differentiate x, you get 1. So you remain with the negative 29. If you differentiate 50y partially with respect to x, it means there is no x here. So the whole of that 50y is a constant. And if you differentiate it, you get 0, isn't it? Yes. If you differentiate 17, there is no x there. It means it is a constant. So you get 0, isn't it? Yes. So at the end, this is what you end up with, isn't it? So now, that is when we've done it for the first time with respect to x. So the first time we've done it partially with respect to x, we now want to do it for the second time again partially with respect to x, isn't it? So it means only x is still considered as a variable. So do it for the second time again partially with respect to x. There's x here, meaning if you differentiate two x, you get two, isn't it? Partially with respect to x, there's no x here, meaning the whole of this is a constant, isn't it? If you differentiate it goes to zero, this is a constant. If you differentiate it goes to zero, you are done, isn't it? You move to the next one. The first time we did it partially with respect to x, but now we want to do it the second time partially with respect to y, isn't it? <coughs> Meaning when we are now differentiating it partially with respect to y, only y is a variable. Anywhere you don't see a y is a constant, isn't it? So it means this is a constant. If you differentiate to get to zero, this is a constant. If you differentiate to get to zero, there is where we have y. If you differentiate, you remain with the negative. 5, and you are done with that, isn't it? <coughs> you move to the next one. Now, this was the first case. The first case is that we started by differentiating partially with respect to y. Now, what about if we start differentiating this function partially with respect to y instead of x, isn't it? In this case, we started partially with respect to x, but now, we now want to start with respect to y. Are we together? So, if you differentiate this function partially with respect to y, only y is a variable. Anything else is a constant. So anywhere you don't see y or anything, that is now treated as a constant. Are we together? Mm -hmm. So it means this x squared is a constant when it is partial with respect to y. So if you differentiate that, you get zero. Here, partial with respect to y, you get 8, 8y. Then here, partial with respect to y, it means negative 5x is a constant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you differentiate y, you get 1. So 1 times that to a constant, you get negative 5. X. Partial with respect to y, there is no y here, so it means the whole of that is a constant goes to zero, isn't it? Partial with respect to y, you remain with plus, plus 50, isn't it? Yes. If I'm setting a constant, zero, you are done, isn't it? So, the first time you've done it, partial with respect to y, we now want to do it for the second time with respect to y again, isn't it? So it means only y is a variable, if you differentiate 8y, you get? This time there is no y, it means it is a constant. If you differentiate, you get 0, isn't it? This is a constant. If you differentiate, you get 0. Then now, the first time here, we've done it partially with respect to y. Second time, we want to do it partially with respect to x. And this is always the same as that, negative 5 on the spot. So, when you are doing it with respect to x, it means this 8y is a constant goes to 0. If you differentiate negative 5 x, you get negative 5, isn't it? If you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So you found all the four partial derivatives, isn't it? So what do you know? At the stationary point, the derivative is zero, isn't it? So at the stationary point, at the stationary point, 
the derivative is zero. But in partial derivatives, we have two derivatives here, isn't it? So at the stationary point, either partial with respect to x or partial with respect to y is zero. So it means either this is zero or this is zero. So it means 2x minus 5y minus 29 is equal to zero, isn't it? So if you take 29 on the other side of the equation, it becomes positive 29, doesn't it? Because you are equating it to zero. Then here, 8y, see you rearrange so that everything starts with x. So you have negative 5, negative 5x 5 starts, isn't it? So negative 5x followed by positive 8y, isn't it? Positive 8y is equal to, then plus 50 if it goes on the other side of the equation, negative 50, isn't it? So here, elimination can be the best method, isn't it? So that you multiply the up equation with the coefficient of the down one, isn't it? And you multiply the down equation with the coefficient of the up one, meaning this upper equation, the coefficient of x is negative 5, then this down equation, the coefficient of x is, so you switch, because you want to eliminate x, isn't it? Uh, so negative 5 must multiply everything. So negative 5 times 2x, you get negative 10. Negative 5 times negative 5, y. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, isn't it? Y is equal to negative 5 times 29. Negative 145. Go to the next one. 2 times negative 5, x. Negative 10, x, isn't it? 2 times positive 8, y. Positive 16, y, isn't it? 2 times negative 50, negative 100. So here for you to eliminate x, they are the same sign. So it means for you to eliminate x, you subtract, isn't it? Negative 10x minus negative 10x, meaning it is negative 10x plus negative 10x, isn't it? 0, okay? I have 25y minus positive 25y minus positive 16y. That is positive 25 minus 16. You get 9, isn't it? So 9y is equal to negative 145 minus negative 100 negative 145 minus negative 100 negative 45 yes, yeah. so after that for you to get y you divide both sides by 9, isn't it? so if you divide both sides by 9 you get y is equal to the negative check it negative 145 Minus negative 100. You press those values the way they are. Are you there? Good. So you have y is negative 5. After getting y, we can now use any equation to get the value of x, isn't it? Like the first equation here, use any equation either this, 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 or this, isn't it? So use any. Which one is simpler to use? See, this one is this idea. This 2x minus 5y is equal to 29. You can use any equation, isn't it? Yeah. Or you can use this, or you can use this, or you can use this. What do you have? Where there is y, you put negative 5. So what do you have? 2x minus 5 into the value of y is equal to 29. 5 times y. So negative 5 times negative 5? Positive 25, isn't it? So you get that 2x is equal to? Well, if you subtract that the other side, so what is x? Two. x is 2. So what is your stationary point? Your stationary point is 2? 2, two negative 5. So you've actually located the stationary point of that function. Are we together? So the stationary point of this function is 2, negative, negative 5. So how can you determine this stationary point to be... 2, negative 5, the next thing we need to do is to state its nature, isn't it? The next thing we need to do is to state its So for us to state the nature of this stationary point, we need the other four partial derivatives. We construct the Hessian matrix, isn't it? So here in this case, we had a function of x of x, y, so if it was there, it would be that function of f of x, y. So if you are constructing the Hessian matrix, we need the determinant of that Hessian matrix. So here we have two variables, it means it is a 2 by 2 matrix, isn't it? If you have three variables, it is a 3 by 3 matrix, isn't it? 
If you have one variable, it is a one by one variable matrix. That's why it is always easier if you want to locate the stationary point of an equation like this. You can see why it's a function of one variable only, isn't it? See, so that is a one by one matrix. See, so that is the reason why you don't go to the discriminant. You just go to the second principle minimum direct, isn't it? Are you seeing? The first derivative of this dy over dx will give you that because the first derivative here dy over dx at the stationary point the derivative so is still the same as partial y over partial x will give you the same value because we are not using partial derivative because it is a function of a single variable are you seeing that? are we together? so that is the case so we have two variables it is a 2 by 2 matrix so we have 2 by 2 means we have 4 elements like that isn't it? So the first member is x, x forms the first row. The second is y, y forms the second row. You define rows first before you go to the column. So we are done with the row, isn't it? We go to the column, x is the first element, x forms the first column. Column is the vertical, x is the first column. Why is that? Y is the second column, second column. So you constructed the Hessian matrix and the two strokes means you are looking for its determinant, isn't it? So from there, we now come and put our point. Our point is 2 negative. So what is the determinant of the Hessian matrix at this point 2 negative 5, isn't it? So start substituting the values. What is f of x, x? You found it to be 2. What is f of x, y? You found it to be negative. And any of them which is not a constant, you substitute the values of that point, isn't it? Then you go f of y x is negative 5. Then f of y y you found it to be 8. So if you get the determinant of this, what do you end up with? The product of the elements in the main diagonal minus the product of the elements in the minor diagonal. And you end up with what do the calculator gives you? Negative 9, isn't it? So negative 9 simply implies what? The determinant of the Hessian matrix is less than? Because negative 9 is less than 0, isn't it? So if the determinant of the Hessian matrix is less than 0, then that also automatically implies that the discriminant is greater than 0 because the discriminant is the negative of the determinant of the Hessian matrix, isn't it? And if the discriminant is greater than 0, that is a shadow, a shadow point. So a shadow point, it means we are no longer going to because a shadow point is a shadow point, it has nothing to do with minimum or maximum, isn't it? So the discriminant is greater than zero, so that implies that the point two negative five is a shadow, is a shadow point. Are we together? So it implies the point two negative five is a shadow, it's a shadow point, and you handle that given problem. 